Hello everyone. Happy Sunday. I hope we're doing okay. Sorry about the little noise there. Just moving some stuff out of the way. How's everyone doing today? Uh, for my American friends, happy Memorial Day. I hope you're having a great weekend. I know you're enjoying the long weekend. Even though lately it's been all long weekends. But I don't know where you are, at least here. What they have done is removed a little bit of the restrictions. So groups of six or uh, six people from two different families can meet as long as they're still social distancing and all that fun stuff. But today I thought it'd be great to make something, you know, a good comfort meal, something that I know I love, but not everyone does. And I think it's just because the people who don't like this are the ones who have had it made really badly. Uh, <laughs> like high school. Um, mom's overcooked it. It's been cooked for hours. Whatever. But what I'm talking about is meatloaf. I know some of you have already shut off the video. <laughs> but give, hear me through. Give this a try. Change it how you like it. But this is something that, when it's done right, can just be one of the most heartwarming meals around. So, as you know, like me with my coffee, back from my old days in computers, why don't we get some cooking done? For those of you who follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you saw my little sneak peek yesterday of some of the stuff we have. Uh, of course, there's hamburger. I cooked up a bunch of bacon. That was I had some fun with that with yesterday's video. Just doing a little time lapse of some bacon slowly rendering and all that fun stuff. I have my oven preheating to 425 degrees. And I have pretty well everything I need here. But as always, there's something I'm going to forget. So, <laughs> for now, let's just start working. Let's get some cutting done and take it from there to start. So, to start off with, we have a couple of different types of cheeses. I have another cheese over here. We have some aged marbled cheddar. You can use whatever you like. It's just these are flavors that I find work really well. A little bit of smoked Havarti because it's nice and creamy. It's going to add a lot of moisture to the dish. And, well, it tastes mm, really good. They always say the chef's treat. You know, the little snacks you get while you're cooking. We have some garlic. And this is really going to be the chopping portion. Now, mm, sorry, that cheese is just so soft and melty. It's really nice. It's got great smoky flavor. And it's going to go great with everything else. Now, I know a lot of people hate peeling and, cr and chopping garlic. Easy way to do it. Take your knife. Put it on top of the garlic. Give it a whack. As you saw, I didn't peel it. And it just comes right out of the shell, right out of that paper. So it's not hard to do. You know, and if you want, you can still peel it the old fashioned way. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just trying to show everyone a quick and easy way. If you, if you hit it too hard like I did there, you even start crushing it in the same shot. But all that paper just comes off. You can just stick that aside. As far as chopping your garlic, you can chop it as fine or as small as you want. I'm not going crazy just because I want... I, I like those little chunks of garlic you get when, when you're eating. Okay. That is just going to go into a bowl that we'll bring out in a second. We have our cheese. Now our cheese I've just cut into little strips. You can see how creamy that is because it's just like sticking. I'm just 
just roughly cutting it into some chunks. Get a little container to put that in. Same thing with our aged cheddar. Just some nice chunks. I want to be able to see, when I cut into this, I want to be able to see the chunks. I want to see those little melty bits. I, I mm -hmm. want to know they're there type thing. And that's the chopping effectively done. And the chef's going to take another snack. <laughs> Next, really, really simple. Mm. Man, that cheese is so good. <laughs> We've got some good old Ritz crackers. We've got the garlic that we just chopped up. I have 32 Ritz crackers in here. The reason it's 32, not 33 or 36, is because when you get them and they're in the sleeves, you know, the individually wrapped tubes, there's 32 in a sleeve. Otherwise, just cut it, just count them up by hand if you get them in a bag like I did today. This, we're just going to brush up a little bit. Sorry, try and get the camera on that. I'm not trying to turn it into flour. I just want it so there's no massive chunks. But pieces this size, there we go, whoops, pieces like that are fine. I'm just going to dust my hands off. Into that, we add about a teaspoon of garlic powder. about the same of smoked paprika. If you can't get smoked paprika, regular paprika will work. It's not a problem. It just adds that extra flavor. Again, a teaspoon of pepper. Now because there's a lot of salt in those Ritz, and there is salt in the cheese, and there's salt in other things we're gonna be adding to this, I'm just adding a teaspoon of salt to that. Next, we want to wet these up. So about a quarter cup of milk and one egg. That's also going to work as the binder to hold everything together here. And I did forget something, of course. I forgot my little spatula. And this, we're just going to mix up Till everything is combined. The egg, of course, is going to help hold everything together. And that's it. Simple so far, eh? We haven't done anything too, too hard. <laughs> if we want now, we can even add our cheese back to that. Just give that a fold all together. And then comes the meat. So for all this, I'm adding whoop, two pounds of hamburger. There we go. Get a little more in there. If you're cooking for more than yourself, like I am, uh, if you're cooking for just yourself, like I am, this is perfect. If you're cooking for a larger family, just double it up. Just double everything up. And right now, all I'm doing is mixing, getting my hands in there. And you don't have to worry about gent being gentle with this. Squish it up. Play with it. If you don't like the feeling of raw meat and all this on your hands, get, we all have disposable gloves it seems these days, so we can just use one of those. 
but I just find getting in there with your hands is the best and easiest way of making sure everything in there gets its first little mix. Now, like I said, for those who saw yesterday's little fun video I did, <laughs> what I have here is one pound of bacon that I rendered. Basically means I cooked it really, really slow so that almost all the fat was melted away. And again, we're going to work that in. Why didn't I put this in when I mixed the other? Because I was an idiot and I forgot. <laughs> it was sort of sitting off cam and I didn't think about it. Now, if you want to add other things to this, if you want to add sautéed onion, if you want to add peppers, carrots, you can just cook them first. Don't put them in here raw. First of all, the moisture that's released from them is going to make you a really wet, mushy meatloaf. Doesn't that just look appealing? <laughs> I'm just going to wash my hands real quick here. And of course, dry them off. Now, there's two other things I want to add into this. Because I didn't add any onions or peppers or anything like that, I find a great little hack or easy way to do it where I'm putting all my vegetables in is, I'm just going to try and get this in can, is I just use a little bit of salsa. It's got peppers, onions, tomatoes. It's got a lot of different spices in it. It adds a little bit of heat, which I like. If you don't like heat, use a mild one. And as I said, if you don't want to add a bunch of stuff to it, leave it out. It's fine. This, I'm just going to sort of get going with... There we go. So I'm just like squish all that in. Let me get rid of some of the onion, uh, not onion skins, garlic skins. And I said there was going to be one more cheese. And there is. I'm just sort of keeping up with that spice with some more cheese. And this is a jalapeno. Monterey Jack. And that's it. All of our ingredients are now in there. So I'm just trying to figure out, make some space. I'm going to go put a couple of things in the fridge because I'm out of room. <laughs> there we go. We can get rid of the spatula again. And just give this one last mix. If you want to do this in a stand mixer with the paddle attachment, that's fine. That's fine. But I hate doing dishes. I know a lot of you don't like doing them. So we all have to keep washing our hands anyway these days. So I might as well kill two birds with one stone. I'll have nice clean hands. And I know this will be mixed up properly. So there we have our meatloaf mix. Once again, time to wash our hands. <laughs> and give them a dry off. Now, a lot of people are going to think twice about this next step. And that is, where did I put it? <laughs> the oven's ready. Is I don't use a loaf pan. I don't cook my meatloaf in a loaf pan. I cook it on a cooking sheet. I'm 
just getting out some tin foil. Oops. And I just, sorry for the noise of this. The reason, there we go. The reason, and I, I've left the edges up, as you see here, making a lip. Well, this way, first of all, it doesn't drip onto my pen, and I can just easily clean it afterwards. But also, when you cook it in a loaf pan, all the fat and everything is all stuck in the pan. It's all stuck right up to the meat and everything. So doing that, first of all, you're not letting it drain off. It's staying in the meat. It's going to be very greasy and oily and not too appealing. But most of all, you aren't baking the meatloaf at that point. You're frying it. And that's why a lot of people have this aversion to meatloaf. Because it wasn't baked. Yes, mom put it in the oven. Yes, she had it in the loaf pan. But because all the fat and everything was in there, it just kept deep frying itself. And if you deep fry something for that long, it's going to get tough, it's going to get mealy, it's going to get grainy, and it's just not going to be nice. Doing it on a cookie sheet like this allows all the fat to drain off that it has to. The meat will still keep what it needs. And any extra liquid has somewhere to go at that point. Not only that, by doing it on... Whoops, I'm trying to get... While I'm talking to you, we're fighting to get this out of the bowl. <laughs> also, also by doing it on a cookie sheet, I can make this almost any shape I want. <laughs> if I want to make a loaf, I still can. If I want to make this look like Mickey Mouse, hey, the world is your option. If you have picky kids, this is great because you can almost make this into hamburger patties, bake that up, and give them hamburgers. They won't know the difference, except it'll be a lot better than what they're used to eating. So, as you can see here, sorry, I'm still working on camera angles and trying to get everything so it all shows. And it keeps my fat stomach out of the way, but it's because of good food like this that I have this. So we can see here, I've got my meatloaf. Or at this point, just a blob of meat. <laughs> what I do want to do is try and keep it fairly even. This way, at least, it'll cook evenly. And there we go. So we can see we've got all these nice bits of cheese here. They're going to brown and crisp up. We have our bits of bacon scattered throughout. Well, with a pound of bacon in there, it's more than scattered. We've got all the peppers and tomatoes and onions that... Whoop. There we go. We've got all the peppers and onions and tomatoes that we added from the salsa. And that's it. Now, I've kept this relatively thin. I don't want to say it's super thin, but it's about two inches thick. And I do that for a couple of reasons. One, it'll cook faster. It'll cook more evenly. The outsides won't get burnt while the inside is still cooking. And I can eat sooner. I have my oven preset to 425. This now is going to go in for about half an hour, 45 minutes. I'll check it at one point just to make sure it's cooking properly. And while that's cooking, what we're going to do is we're going to make the easiest glaze ever. So, whew, that now is in my oven. Trying to set my timer, but of course. There we go. The timer didn't want to work. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Well, just quickly. 
move some things around. As I said, we are basically now going to make the easiest glaze that you want for this. Now, if you don't want a glaze on your meatloaf, don't put one on. That's completely up to you. I like that little glaze. I like the little crispy bit that it gives you. But that's me. And it does, though, add... Sorry, I'm trying to open a new bottle. <laughs> A new bottle here. There we go. <laughs> it adds a lot of flavor. It adds some really nice, when all the sugars and everything caramelize, it has a little crispy top to it. So we just have a little bowl here. We're going to add good, oh, whoops, good old ketchup. I have what roughly half a cup there there's no exact measurements to this you can change it up however you like a couple of tablespoons of just yellow mustard <coughs> excuse me to keep up with the smokiness just a little bit of a pre-made barbecue sauce that I like and finally to give it a little extra sweetness and this will help the crust and all just some good old-fashioned honey and that again maybe two te two tablespoons now you don't want to go through all this not a problem use your favorite barbecue sauce skip the glaze all together if you want and just serve it with a nice gravy and some mashed potatoes you know what i do both i do the glaze but i still make a nice gravy to serve with it once that's all mixed just give it a taste make sure all the flavors are there i'm not going to add any salt to this because Needless to say, there's a ton in everything. I am going to add just a pinch of pepper to the mix. And that's our glaze done. It's as simple as that. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to take a little break here. This is going to keep cooking. Like I said, I've got the timer set for half an hour. After half an hour, we're going to give it a, a, give it a coating of our glaze. I'm going to put it back in the oven for maybe 15 minutes. And then we're done. Then it's time for dinner. So, until that comes out of the oven, let's take a little break, have some coffee, and just relax. So, we'll see you all shortly. Just to let you see where we are so far after 30 minutes, we've got all that nice melty cheese. I did already drain a lot of the fat that came out when that was done when I pulled it out and now we're just going to quickly glaze this and you can do this as nice or as quick and messy as you want you just want to sort of make sure you get it everywhere like I say this is a glaze so you don't have to be really fancy or anything with it we just are walking in a lot more of those juices we're gonna make sure that nothing there we go and this you can add as much or as little as you want I'm gonna add a little more and thanks to my cam I can actually see some spots back there I missed <laughs> and that's that this now goes back in the oven for like I said about that's gonna go back in now for about another 15 20 minutes we want to crisp and caramelize all that coating 
So once that's done, we'll do our final check on it. Till then, enjoy your day. Hello everyone and welcome back again. It's only been nine minutes. I keep ch I kept checking on it because I don't want the glaze to burn with the honey, with all the sugar that's in the ketchup and everything. Better safe than sorry. So I checked, it's all done. It's looking great. Get that little tin foil out of the way. You can see a little bit more fat has come out. Well, that's normal. It's all nice and golden. It's beautiful. I can tell it's fully cooked because when you touch it, it's not... It doesn't feel all wet and mushy. So I know that's fully cooked. Now, this ideally should sit for about 20 minutes. Just let it rest. Let it mellow out. Any juices that are trying to get out will get soaked back into the meat and it won't be as dry as mom's old meatloaf, so to speak. <laughs> so I know everyone always asks, well, how does it taste? How does it taste? I know this is going to taste right now like flaming hot lava because I just pulled it out of the oven. But a nice piece there. We got some crispy little melted cheese. I've got, I can see the bacon. The glaze I can smell. <laughs> this is going to hurt. Mm. That is really good. Of course, I can taste all the bacon. I get a little bit of heat from the salsa because I did use a hot one. Um... I can taste the glaze, the cheese comes through. I'm actually getting a nice little hit of the smokiness from the uh, the smoked the smoked cheese that we put in there. So all in all, really quick to make, not hard to do. 45 minutes in the oven and dinner was done. A nice, great, comforting meal. Can't fault that. I know this looks like a lot and I know I said it's just for me. Some will be for dinner tonight. Serve it up with some broccoli, some mashed potatoes, some gravy. Perfect dinner. But once this cools off, slice it up on a nice roll. Great meatloaf sandwich. And if, ever, if you ever again think, oh it's meatloaf. This is basically a hamburger. It's a hamburger that we put all the fixings and all the seasoning in the meat. So it's the same thing. It's just like I said, most everyone I know who doesn't like meatloaf, it's because it's been overcooked and cooked to death. And there's been, it's just grainy, gritty, horrible meat. But when it's done right, it'll be the best comfort meal you can think of. I want to thank everyone for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It shows YouTube that you care about what I do. If you are already subscribed, thank you very much for checking this out. Hit that like button and it just shows me that you like what I'm doing. So until next time, my name is Andrew. I'm the 5pm Chef and thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time.